All right, we're going to uh, graph this function here, y equals negative cosine parentheses 2t minus pi over 2 close parentheses plus 3. There's a few different things that we have uh, going on with this function. We have a negative amplitude, we have a phase shift, and we also have a vertical shift. So as you can see here, we have uh, the normal order that we follow in order to uh, get these values so we can graph this function. So first, let's go with the amplitude. Recall that the amplitude is always the number that is in front of the function. We don't have a number in front of the function, so we consider it to be a 1. There is, however, a negative sign. So we say that the amplitude is a negative 1. All this tells us at this time is that the function without the phase shift or the vertical shift basically goes up to a positive 1 and down to a negative 1. The next thing we calculate is the period, and in order to do that, we recall that the formula for the period is 2 pi over k. k is the number that comes before the variable. The variable in this case is t, so k is going to be 2, and we're going to write 2 pi over 2, which as the 2s divide out, that leaves us with pi. The next is the phase shift, and the formula for the phase shift is negative c over k. We already know that k is 2, so we can put that in. c is the number that comes after the variable inside the parentheses, and it's either added to or subtracted to, so it's a negative pi over 2. Recall also that when you're finding the phase shift, you put a negative sign first, no matter what c is. c actually happens to be negative pi over 2. Now, these two negatives become a positive, and that's not usually a problem for people to see. However, if you take pi over 2, which is in reality 1 half pi, and divide that by 2, you are not canceling out the twos. What you're doing is one half pi times one half, which is actually pi over four. All right, so the next thing is our vertical shift. And we denote that with the variable h. And h is always a number that is being either added or subtracted outside the parentheses. So that's simply going to be a three. And the next thing is our midline, and what we have to write is an equation for a horizontal line. Y is always equal to whatever the value of H is, so our midline function is going to be Y equals 3. The next thing we'll do is rewrite this function without C, which is basically causing the phase shift, and which out without H, which is causing the vertical shift. So what we'll write is Y equals negative cosine 2t. This is the function that we'll wind up graphing first, and then we'll worry about the phase shift and the vertical shift after that. All right, as you can see, we have a y-axis drawn here, and remember that's uh, what we always start with from section 6.4 and 6.5. What we have to figure out is how to label this y-axis. Recall that from the amplitude, we said that the function without the vertical shift will be as high as positive 1 and as low as negative 1. However, this vertical shift adds 3 to the height of the regular amplitude. So since without the vertical shift, it would get up to positive 1. With the vertical shift, it'll actually get up to positive 4. So we're going to number our y-axis. Start with the 4 here. 3, 2, 1. We'll save this for the x-axis, and we'll also have a negative 1. All right, we've cleaned our graph up a little bit here, and as you can see, we have our x-axis drawn in. Now, recall that the x-axis, we split up into four parts, and we start off at the end here, and at the end goes whatever value the period is, so that would be pi. The next 
x value we get is the second, which would be in the middle. And this second x value here is going to be half of whatever the period is. So the period is 1 pi. Half of that will be pi over 2. The first point is going to be half of the middle point. So half of a half is a fourth. So we'll have pi over 4 here. And the last thing we need is the three-quarter point here. That will always be 3 times the first value. So the first value is 1 pi over 4. The third value will be 3 pi over 4. OK, next, um, we recall that regular cosine starts and ends at its highest point. In the middle, it is at its lowest point. However, because our amplitude is negative, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to start and end at its lowest points, and in the middle, it is going to be at its highest point. And recall that this is the function without the phase shift or the vertical shift. That's what we'll graph first and then we'll move it. So y equals negative cosine 2t. At the beginning, it'll be at negative 1. And we know at the end, it will also be at negative 1. Halfway through, it's going to be at its highest point, which is positive 1. And the zeros are at 1 quarter of the way and 3 quarters of the way. And we connect these points with a dotted line. All right, the next thing we're going to draw is the midline function, and that is y equals 3. This is going to represent the x-axis being virtually moved up three spaces. So right here, what we're going to have is a dashed line. All right, as you can see through the magic of technology, we've inserted our horizontal midline function. All right, now we are finally ready to move our points here. All right, remember we have two things going on. We have a phase shift and we also have a vertical shift. The vertical shift is very simple to see. It's a positive three, which means each of the points is going to move up three spaces. Now, the phase shift is a little bit different. C is negative pi over 2. If C is negative, that's going to make the phase shift be a positive number. If C is negative or if the phase shift is positive, that means all our points are going to move to the right. And we will count how many spaces pi over 4 represents on this axis. Pi over 4 represents one space. So each point is going to move one space to the right and three spaces up. If you are moving to the right, we want to start at the beginning because if you started at the end of the graph, then your point would be off the graph. So let's go ahead and move this first point here. This first point, we are going to move it one space to the right, which will put it at pi over four, and then one, two, three spaces up. So the first point moves one space to the right and one, two, three spaces up. Let's get to the second point here. Its coordinates are pi over 4, comma 0. And this point will move one space to the right and one, two, three spaces up. This point right here, the coordinates are pi over 2, comma 1. Once again, we are going to move one space to the right and one, two, three spaces up. All right, this point, the coordinates are 3 pi over 4 comma 0. Once again, one space to the right, 1, 2, 3 spaces up. All right, now what we're going to do is connect what we have so far. And notice that we are missing the beginning. And uh, these graphs are symmetrical, so as you can see, what we're going to wind up with is an upside-down sine wave. So since we have a zero here, a zero here, we want to follow a pattern. This line is actually going to go up back two, 
the zero point. So we are done.